wrong one, sorry. Let's move to the correct. Okay, there we go. How's it going, everybody? Crotch shot. Uh, very, very uh, professional here. We'll go ahead and cover myself up. Uh, for, uh, so we don't get demonetized there. It's uh, not, a, not a meat unpacking stream. We're opening some boxes. So, as the stream title implies, We've got some Dawn of Majesty and Lightning Overdrive. Usually I like doing full boxes. Did I say opening boxes? Were op well, I mean packages, but we're doing booster packs. Um, got uh, nine cards per pack here. Um, so I think the ones that we got before were five card booster packs. So we will see uh, one foil in every nine card pack. Uh, these were at the Walmart. Uh, I didn't think our Walmart, Walmart carried them because I kept looking like in the toy section. Uh, the cards, games, like nothing. And then uh, I was at the card shop and they're like, yeah, they, they had to lock them behind the like liquor counter or like the tobacco counter uh, checkout line because people were like getting into fights. Um, scalpers being scalpers, you know what it is. Um... The man with the gambling addiction? Look, addiction is a problem. And I don't have a problem with it. Okay? I'm completely fine having this. <laughs> so anyway, um, finally got him. Uh, I, I, I felt awkward because the, the lady was super cool. She was like, do you have any um, of the packs that you want? Or like, do you know which one you want? And I'm like trying not to say Yu-Gi-Oh as a grown man out loud. Um kind of like saying I'm a YouTuber out loud. It's just not very flattering. But uh, <laughs> in any case, um, yeah. Oh, here's the bag that we're in. Let me get that off stream. Because it's filthy, Drac. You're filthy. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Um, I, I wasn't sure if this was going to be a bust or not, but this one actually has some pretty heavy hitters um, in this pack that we can really make something back on let me see here um we can get the diviner of the herald secret rare uh we can get live twin key sickle frost starlight rare the um ch -ch -ch black rose dragon starlight rare um uh, which i might keep that one because it's a good card um, but I might I might go for a cheaper version for like personal use, um, and there there are a few in here that we can we can turn around a pretty good profit. Uh, Bahaludia, the Grand Radiant Starlight Rare. Um, so yeah, a a good a good number of cards in here. Um, and then, of course, Son of Majesty, what we want is that Starlight Rare, uh, Starlight, or Stardust Dragon. Um, you want me to flip the camera? Yeah, I can. Uh, or I, I can just do this. Does that make it better for you? I guess I'm going to be looking at it myself, so I'll, I'll flip it. Not a, not an issue. Let me see if I can um, transform. Rotate one eighty. We good there? Yeah, it makes sense. Hope that's not disorienting for anybody. All right. So let's start with. Uh, Donna Majesty, we're already, we've done this before. Got my sleeves ready. Got a cup of water dangerously close to the whole thing. And uh, yeah, let's get into this. I actually didn't notice that the, uh, these were nine card packs when I got them. I was like, ah, five bucks per, per pack is a little steep. But then realizing this is almost the same as what we got for the box for a little cheaper. But we'll see. We, we I don't, I don't know the rates. Um, somebody in the comments can, can tell me, or one of you guys. Can I zoom in a little? Yeah, let me... Let me make sure that it's... 
properly centered so you're seeing what needs to be seen. We good there? But uh, yeah, the booster box was uh, five cards per, so. Um, I'm gonna actually get all these out of the boxes first. I wanna save some time. Don't oh, Konami better serve you. I wanted to check and see what it required, like what business requirements there are to have your store qualify to get the boxes wholesale. Because the local shop um, can't carry them because they have to buy them like full price. Basically, they don't get the wholesale discount for whatever reason, but they get it for, for magic. Main boosters are two secrets, four ultras. All right. Yeah, but these are these yeah these are still first edition English edition first edition being an OST for Konami they're weird about the yeah or OTS what I thought was weird I was watching like team APS and they were commenting on why somebody didn't want to play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore and one of it was like it's expensive to like keep up with and then the prize pools are like non-existent and I was like it's weird because like the first season was a whole tournament arc I mean it's all a tournament arc um where there's a huge prize pool of money like even even gotcha games when they have their their Regionals will like give the prize pool and then a portion of money spent. I know Summoner's War did that. For all the crap Summoner's War did wrong. Oh, these feel good to hold. This is fun. This is great. So, let's start off here. Oh, hi, Mark. Or Saiyan, whichever. I want to pull a Starlight Rare too. <laughs> you and me both. Glacier, Aquamador, seen that one before. More Sioux ships. I kept reading it as Sunship the last time I did a uh, box opening like this. Oh, cool. I got another ultra rare of Volo Fer. 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 I don't know. So next card, we'll set him aside over there. Xyz. And Baby Moo Dragon. Did I get the Moo Dragons last time? A lot of these are going straight to the card shop. <laughs> it's hard to open a box and then not get a lot of the commons, you know what I mean? So that was like 36 packs. Jar of Generosity. Uh, Chronomaly Ultra Rare, okay. Master's Diplomat. Does it come with crippling debt? That's what I want to know. I've been sealing. I've been sleeving them properly now, so the they're going in top ways there. So I'll set you over here. And I actually don't think this one is of much. Value, so I'll just set it with the rest of them right there. It's not a biggie. If you want cash utility your prize card, yeah. That's kind of the thing, though. It's like you got to choose between getting the the prize card and uh, your uh, earnings. Okay. Tin Dangle. We didn't get that one last time. Kind of neat. Set you over there. All right.
right, and more Sioux ships. Next. If you want to keep sell, there's a website that lets you donate them to kids. Oh, cool. I might do that. Cat? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know where you get off getting on. No. Against cash price support, so Konami hasn't done. Yeah, I know. I, I was just saying it's weird. Alright, another Majestic Dragon. Oh, another one of these guys. He's popular, ain't he? Set you over there. Margin trading. Sushi so data special. Are you, are you talking about the, the card descriptions on the normals? Let's see if I can find a normal in here. I haven't actually looked through what they do, but I have a lot of them, so. Yeah, it's back here. Holy crap. This is so much text for. Uh, finally got to visit that harbor specializing in Gunkin Sioux ships that I've been curious about for a while. The premium Shari here is limited to 2,000 Sioux ships a year and uses specially developed smooth aged Gunkin Sioux ship. Oh, wait, rice, giving it extra boldness not found anywhere else. The classy atmosphere made my heart sing too. The Gunkin Sioux ship served, had a perfect balance of vinegar, nigiri, shine and shape, demonstrating exquisite artisanship. The owner told me, we are introducing rich yet mellow scented Edo Front red vinegar in the near future, which I'm really looking forward to. However, I was disappointing. Uh, the surrounding seas were a little noisy. So giving it four stars with hope of improvements in the future. <laughs> it's a freaking review. <clears throat> I love that. That's funny. Four stars because it's a level four. Ah, I get it. I get it. That's that's funny. That's silly. You got that silly. So assortment. See, Stardust Illumination. This one is not is not so great. But no no dice. And the Starlight Rare. We'll put these away though. I just kind of like this card design. He looks cool, like a dragon riding a. It's not, is it Slutnir or? Come on, camera, focus. I'm not sure. There, there are people that are like, it's Slutnir's the one with eight legs, and if it's the one with six, then it's. it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. So, a lot of cards we've seen before. Which is A-OK. -okay. But now, let's get into Lightning Overdrive. I think having a, being able to donate them to kids is cool. Um, but I also like supporting the, the local shop as well. Both are good options, though. Being a dad does give me a soft spot to help out kids, though. Probably more in form of food or medical treatment than Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but still. Anything helps, right? Needs more dragon maids. True. True. I'm waiting for reprints. Actually, there there were reprints, weren't there? In uh, the golden, something gold. The gold pack. Maximum gold. That's it.
Yeah, that's one of the ones we're going for. Chaos as uh, the Black Rose Dragon. <clears throat> we're talking about, uh, or I was watching another video and they were talking about reprints. And it was like, uh, one of the comments was, yeah, reprints are rough, but then you go into magic. And it's like, what are reprints? LOL. <laughs> been so excited to do these though you have no idea the self-control it took to have all these on my desk and not open them right away oh, war rock wento so our ultra rare I just, I, I, I would want to get more into magic if I had people to play with, and if, um, Draconic Halberd. Always love more dragon cards, so that's always welcome. Um, I, I just also don't really like the card designs. I think the artwork is really good, but they don't really stand out. Like, the, the artwork and the card itself always seem to kind of blend together for whatever reason. Or the the main thing of the artwork, like the main uh, subject, doesn't stand out from the background. And so I'm, I'm not uber fond of that. I, like, I really like the hollow effect on this one. Like, look, almost looks, uh, the background almost looks ghost rare. Looks really cool. This is a long gone. Yeah, I know how you feel. Yeah, if I was gonna do magic, I'd do it on on the online game. Uh, Pendren sec, Pendra section, Pendren section. It's a cybers monster. A plus for the artwork on all these. Like, some of these are like crazy detailed. Couple more, the saddest time. War Rock Spirit. It's our prismatic. Basil Rose Shoot. All right, now we got to get the Rose Dragon. We we got a Rose card, so this one's got the this anti theft seal, so you know something good's in there. Even though that was not the case for the, <laughs> the Donna Majesty packs, but the Donna Majesty didn't have a whole lot anyway. So I just got it for that shot, that six hundred six hundred dollar card, you know. All right, General. Oh, 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 this is a good one. This is a pretty good one. This is one of the ones we were looking for. This one runs 350. Oh no, if it's a Starlight Rare. I think this is just the Ultra Rare version. Yeah. Yeah, this one, all right, never mind. This one's only 10 bucks. <laughs> Still not bad, but not the one we were looking for. Or not the version we were looking for, unfortunately. Close. We got bamboozled, chat. We got bamboozled. All right. 
There we go. Oh, man. I was hoping for the Albion branded dragon because he looks super cool. But. Oh, well. Yeah. Chat was all too quick to shoot me down there. Come on, Drac. That's just the ultra rare. How dare you have excitement. I actually don't even know what this one does. This is a Lila, Lila monster. You can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon live twin, uh, whatever, once per turn this way. The card is added from your main deck to your opponent's hand, from the main deck to your opponent's hand by card effect. While you control an evil twin monster, uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard, draw one card. Hmm. Interesting. Take it easy. That's it, dragon. We're all done. You were here for the full thing. I didn't get too many. I can't justify, like, buying a whole bunch of cards. Otherwise, it is gambling. I've got a set budget for the, the stuff, and I just enjoy the experience of opening all these things, so... Let's see here what we got. Oh, these sleeves are so slippery. These are going to go into the binder later. So War Rock. Let's see. If your Earth monster battles an opponent's monster during the damage calculation, you pay 800 life points. Your battling monster gains 800 attack. So at the end of the turn of this card is sent from your... Uh, monster zone to your graveyard by an opponent's card effect. You can special summon one level five or higher war rock monster from your hand or deck. And then this war rock spirit features her. Let's see, during the battle phase, target one war rock monster in your graveyard and activate one of these effects. Uh, special summon that target in attack position, but for the rest of the turn, its effects are negated. Also, it cannot attack directly. Or, special summon the target in defense position. Uh, also, the first time each war rock monster you control would be destroyed by battle this turn, it is not destroyed. So you get two hits. Basically. You can only activate one per turn. Not too bad, not too bad. Nothing particularly crazy. Curious though, the binary blader. I'm not, I'm not too keen on like what all the uh, links do. I knew, I know that you don't even like need them to be themed around your deck as long as they their effect works towards your deck. But, uh, like, look at all this freaking text. It's just wild. <clears throat> I feel like they wouldn't have to worry about banning so much if they just kept the effects a little simpler. Guardian Sphinx. What does this one do? This one has the Rose Dragon on it. This is someone on the Rose Dragon Monster from your graveyard. Or hand or graveyard in defense position. The set card is destroyed. You can target one of your Black Rose Dragon or one monster that specifically lists that card in its text that is banished or in your graveyard. Special summon it. That's not bad. That's not bad because you can... There, there are plenty of cards that you can destroy your own spells. So that's uh, something you could do. Uh, combo into Yeah, I challenge scrap raptor My daughter likes dinosaurs, but I don't think that one is quite Something she'd like <laughs> Let's split these things up Scrap Raptor is good, eh? 
I do keep um, at least three of each copy that I get, and then the extras go to the card shop, unless I really don't care for what we've got. Um, Pendulum, I will agree, it's... It, I don't think it's been good for the overall game, just because even if it hasn't, like, hurt the actual game itself, like how it plays, um, it hurt the reception from a lot of people, like, I think it overwhelmed a lot of people, and that's not what you want to do. You want to get people excited over new stuff, and I know they got to keep the game fresh, but as an outsider coming back in, that was, like, the biggest thing, like, oh man, I miss Yu-Gi-Oh, and the only reason I got into Duel Links again was because they didn't have all the new summons. Um, I think Xyz, like, special summoning that way is pretty cool, but Pendulum is... Everything that people hate with modern Yu-Gi-Oh. And I'd, I'd be happy if they just murdered it outright. Like, hey, retcon, we're not doing this anymore. Sorry. You know what I mean. Traps. Spells. Effects. Links. And pendulum. Alright, and we'll sort through those later. This isn't such a big deal because I already have... I already went through all these. <laughs> Um, I was interested in the magic key set. That seems pretty cool. Um, I may as well just sort these out. It gives me something to do while I chat with you guys. Uh, it's kind of therapeutic. I, I almost want to go into the card shop here and just start sorting cards in the boxes. That's... I don't know why it's like therapeutic for me. I feel like uh, I'd have Archer laughing his ass off at me from the show. I don't know what it is. It just puts me in a happy place being able to uh, get all these things in order. I have to dig out all the other cards and make sure I have three <laughs> of certain ones. Because uh, I'm sure a few I didn't get the full amount. Normal spell. Let's see. Effect normal. Synchro. Xyz. Link. Pendulum. Trap and spell. Put that on there. No, after playing, uh, having played Monster Hunter Stories for a bit, I played the first one, but I, I didn't quite get the, uh, the feeling before of, uh, what was that? Is it Duel, uh, Forbidden Kingdom or something like that? The PS2 game where you fought, it was like an RPG with your monsters. I don't think it was an RTS. It was, it was one where you had like your deck master, but you were you're fighting. What am I gonna teach my daughter to play? Was it false false bond king? That yeah, I think it's false bond kingdom. That's right. Um, she is actually getting better at reading, which is like I'm really happy, but. My wife and I had been like encouraging her and encouraging her, uh, and she just wasn't ready for it, which which was frustrating for us because she she was ready, like she's just so smart and she really doesn't give herself enough credit. Um, yeah, they they did a really good job with like a lot of those old games. I loved, I think I loved every single PS2 Yu-Gi-Oh game. Like, they were just creative, they were fun, um... Like, like that's the way to... Like, I, I prefer more spins on the actual game and the lore and the monsters and the creatures and all that stuff, um, in that way, than, like, 
adding more convoluted crap to keep up with. Like, they're just digging themselves into this hole. It kind of stinks, so. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, for my daughter, I, I hope to get her into it. Um, she's definitely interested. She did ask me to teach her, but I'm like, you got to read a lot for this. Um, and I'll probably keep her... Maybe... I'll, I'll probably keep her season one and two. Fusion summons at this point, I think, are all she can handle up until, like, maybe she's eight. And then I can start introducing more of the complicated, like, combos and stuff. But, yeah, for... I could always teach her with the Slifer and Obelisk deck. Because I've kept those together. <clears throat> Let's see more of Kaiba. Speaking of, I just showed Corey... Uh, I bought the Dark Side of Dimensions movie. And because I, I was talking to Corey about it, and I was like, "You haven't seen this?" And he's like, "No. Wh when did that come out?" And I guess he'd seen clips, but I was like, "Yeah, this was uh, like 2016. Like the animation's on point, and they got all the original cast back, and you know, it's it's still some contrived Yu-Gi-Oh plot points, but it's still just fun." Yeah, I, I mean, I used to, I never, like, went to events or tournaments or something. I, I don't think I'd ever want to. Um, just because of the um, issues with, like, deck stealing. Like, I'd hate to have a deck that I, I love, play with people, um, and then, like, get it stolen, or just the fact that there are people out there that I don't want to interact with. Like, the, the kind of people that nobody wants to interact with. People who, like, rules lawyer. Or people who try and cheat. Uh, you know, just people with no actual love for the game. They just want to win at any cost. And that kind of sucks. So, I'd like to keep it with friends. And that's why I wanted to get back into it. Just because I heard Corey played it. And Yomu plays it. Um, and I can, like, put stuff together. And we could just have some fun duels together. Yeah, just bags stolen, anything stolen. So I'm looking forward to the new game that they're putting out. And I wouldn't mind switching over and putting more money into that. Because um, it seems like they want to do more stuff where it's like they could hold tournaments with that because then the rules are based on the AI. Um, it's the full format of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not like Duel Links where it's the speed duel format, which I actually really like. I like the speed duel because uh, it, it, it lets you have so many uh, different combos that aren't necessarily in the current meta because of like deck size and all that. Could always do pack yeah we, we've done some of those we we opened up uh i liked just having the physical cards because it's fun to just collect and just having them in your hand and it's weird but you all get it the smell just it takes you back i really wish these didn't look so weird though like these, these pendulum cards just i watched a couple videos on how to do it and i still don't fully understand <laughs> how it even works. I know that, like, this is like if it's your, uh, in the spell card zone, this is when it's summoned as a monster, uh, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. <laughs> it's really weird. <clears throat> But yeah, um, we we would like we before we open the packs, we put them online into like Project Ignis, and then did our duels that way. Um, but yeah, you have like online pack simulate, like the they simulate the openings for the more expensive packs. So we did that with um, Mystic Fighters because the box of that is like two hundred bucks 
It's wild. Speed duels haven't been, from what I understand, they haven't been um, promoted very well at all over here. Um, but uh, I think Duel Links is a really good game. And uh, doesn't break the bank. Like, if you want to throw 15 bucks at it every month, you're going to get a lot. A lot of bang for your buck. A um, lot of resources to figure out, alright, what's good, what... Uh, what should I be like focusing on? Where are the packs that uh, the stuff's from? Clean this up a little bit. It feels like Christmas. I just like doing these though. Like it just takes me back. I can't overindulge. That's the tricky part. I don't want to overindulge. And the channel, this channel isn't a Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm not a Yu-Gi tuber. So I can't do uh can't over justify it, you know what I mean? But even like the YouTubers, nobody's nobody's free of RNG. You know what I mean? I got that ghost rare, which really put the fire in my belly to keep going. But uh yeah. Not hard to learn. It's just overly... It, it just doesn't... It's it's hard to, like, look at and be like, Oh, I can pick that up. Like, if you if you look at a... a li even links are a little bit easier to understand. Like, okay, it's got arrows on it. Um, you need two... Like, effect monsters or whatever to special summon it. I don't know if you can special... Like, you send them to the... For, if they need to be on the field and then you discard them or like summon it that way or if you discard the effect monsters and then you get the link out um anyway you got the arrows of points to these zones and then that's how you get a combo going you have a new link zones right um not too hard to get your wrap your head around um Ixies was super simple so it's literally these level six monsters or two level four monsters or or whatever and and that's really straightforward or synchros one tuner one non-tuner or whatever it, it asks for and then just make sure it adds up to the level so it's a different version of ritual summoning more or less except ritual summoning i think you could go over the uh, star level and then Pendulum, like, once you're in it, I'm sure it's fine. It's not too hard to, like, understand. But it's still a stupid mechanic. Because, aside from being, like, intimidating to, like, get into, which killed a lot of the fan base, um... And killed a lot of the engagement for it, even if it's not like super played, it's just poorly marketed. It's just I don't know. Uh, it also just like makes it so that it seems like it's you summon way too much with them, uh, which just leads into these like really long combos. So even if they're not broken, it's not fun to play against, regardless. And I, I just don't like that. Some people really like going back and forth and trying to like end it and like basically it's 40 card speed duels instead of the 20 like dual links They, I mean, they had to ban a lot of pendulums. Like, either pendulums were... See, like, I was looking at, like, history and, like, trying to figure out what, what people thought of them. And, like, D did it really kill Yu-Gi-Oh? And it's like, no, they didn't kill Yu-Gi-Oh. Even though it killed the interest in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, like, it didn't 
they weren't game breaking. But if they were game breaking, they were game breaking to the point where they just had to be eradicated. Like, uh, what is it? The Zoo. The Z Zoo DX. For one, and then the, the monkey. And then too many cards have uh, Omni Negates for like almost no trade off. So it's like, does card do this? Now it doesn't. And basically it. Oh, ZDX, Xyz, my bad. So, uh, yeah. If I ever, like, my recommendation, like, what I wanted to try, rather, I don't know if it will work. Um, I know that they tried to limit special summoning at a, at a certain point to try and combat it. I don't think the summoning necessarily is the issue as much as, like, card combo length. So I think when most people, at least in my inter my interpretation of when people say, I want, I want fun decks, they're thinking, like, more classic stuff where it's, you know... I have this combo, that combos into this, that combos into that, and then that's done. Like, I play this card, which lets me draw, which then now I special summon, or now I fusion. This fusion lets me bring out this. And then, like, I think classic Yu-Gi-Oh had maybe... I want to say 10 and under moves per turn. So if you had a move limit, and then split that into tiers, and maybe have, like, subcategories, like, you can... It, it would get a little complicated until it was really ironed out, but like, you know, you play a card that goes into this, or, you know, you, you have this many moves, and then you build your deck around getting that the most bang for your buck, and then that would be like tier 3, and then tier 2 you'd have 15 moves, and then tier 1 you'd have 20 moves, and then tier 0 you'd have unlimited, and that's where you could get people who, who want to be like, wonky board breaking and all that stuff and like at the lower ones you'd have omni negates are, are the ban list and then you can only have one omni negate card in your deck and then two and then unlimited you know what i mean even if your opponent goes first you generally still get to play i don't know if that's true all the time i hear too many complaints on the contrary with certain metas, just you you don't get to do anything, or you have to play around, like break trying to break the unbreakable. I love how the person who's saying pendulums are easy to wrap their head around are saying that putting a turn limit is too complicated. <laughs> Seriously, okay. But, uh, yeah. I... That does a lot for very little of it. That's the thing, is that you have a lot of Omni Negates that, like, don't require you to, uh... Oh, yeah, Dragoon. Uh, I heard a lot about that one. Which is unfortunate, because it's, like, a really cool card design. Traditional format with the current cards. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think what I, I literally just watched a video on Dragoon, and I think the main issue with Dragoon is Anaconda. Um. Like, the ease of getting it out is really low. Anaconda, I think, is the, the major problem. I think Dragoon is still a, is too strong. Because I believe I believe its effect is Omni. I guess it has some Omni. Hang on, let me... I have my keyboard over here. Uh, is it Red Eyes Dark Dragoon? one of the first one. Uh, do, 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 do. Cannot be destroyed by card effects. 
already kind of strong, but we've had a few that are like... I would, I think I'd be more okay with it if it was like, cannot destroy dragons with card effects with it, because, or like, once this is summoned, it cannot be destroyed by card effects um, for like the turn. Uh, neither player can target this card with card effects. Um, uh, during your main phase, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls, and if you do inflict that damage to your opponent equal to the monster's original attack. That's... Yeah, that, that doesn't need to be in there. Um, you can use this effect um, a number of times per turn, up to the number of normal monsters you use as fusion material for this card. Holy shit. That's, so you can do that twice without even attacking. Once per turn when this card, if you could do that once per turn and then not attack, that would be much more balanced. Um, cause then you get into the territory of Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon, which is like really easy to get out and has a really strong effect, but you cannot, um, attack if you use that. Um, do 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 Once per turn, when a card effect is activated as a quick effect, jeez, fucking please, you can discard one card and negate the activation. And if you do destroy that card, I mean, at least there's a cost. It's got the, um, Dark Paladin mechanic there. Uh, and if you do destroy that card, and if you do that, this card gains a thousand attack. That's too much. That's too much. That's way too much. Yeah, I think, um, hang on, one second. I don't know, I don't know why the concept of... I think, I think... Does MTG have a turn limit? I had heard something like the, the card limit wasn't as high, or was higher in MTG because you had a limited number of like moves you could make. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll definitely agree. I, I don't like... Uh, I don't like how, how much they give for free. Yeah, de definitely disagree, like, just saying you have 10 moves per turn. I don't I don't think that would be too hard, because that's that's mostly what people don't like. Like, a summon con constitutes a move. Playing, not setting a card, but, like, playing a card constitutes a move. Uh, did you naturally limit the number of... because of mana? Yeah. So it's something that needs to be, like, workshopped and tested and stuff if it's going to be, like, cool. But, like, that, that'd be something that I'd at one point maybe want to try. Is having people... Because the whole thing with, like, the tier system was, like, what, what kind of tournament do you want to enter? What kind of duels do you want to play? And then you'd have different decks... Uh, that you'd make or different tournaments or different games that you can play based on like what you're comfortable with so if you want to play decks that have like ridiculous amounts of turns and summons and board setups and unbreakables or whatever then you can like play up here or if you just kind of want to play casually do go down here you know you get your normal mode hard mode expert mode master mode And that, that's just, it's never fun to be on the, the other end of. Um, it's 
So, I, uh... It, it makes uh, games like... It's not even just Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like any fighting game. Like, if, if I'm in Fighter Z, it's just exhausting. Because, uh... The blocks... I think I, the biggest thing I have an issue with is block strings. Um... I got, I got used to, like, combo lengths in Fighter Z. Like, okay, I'm just going to watch my character die for a bit and wait for them to drop or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah. The, the block strings. Just being able to continue on with your auto combo and then lengthen it with three fucking assists. No, two assists. Uh, it's just frustrating. Because it's like, you can have really good defense, but you get mixed up once. And, and you're, you're, you're knocked down again. <laughs> and then you have to defend all over again. It, it's very one-sided if somebody gets, like, the pressure, unless you are really clever with getting out of it. Yeah, that's why I'm looking, I see that they have the, uh, time limit and stuff. But, uh, it's hard to do live. Uh, That's the biggest thing. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to the new game coming out. Uh, one, it's going to be multiple, multi-platform, cross-platform, so that ups the uh, accessibility tremendously, and you have it automated. It, it just makes more sense, um, rather than having, like, 50 people with, like, a few judges trying to jump around and, like, trying to deal with somebody like being able to ha be against somebody who cheats <laughs> rather than the game just being like nah you can't do that hey Neko Trinity format interesting yeah so I'll, I'll probably keep it online, or if I'm I, like these are all to, like to play with friends. Like I'd have my camera set up here. I I need to get a, a deck mat that doesn't actually really don't like this fabric. It's like the I don't know what it is, what it's called, but it gives me goosebumps. I can't touch it um, very well. Like this doesn't bother me too much because my hand isn't on my mouse very often, um, unless I'm editing, I guess. Even then, I I'm not touching it. Uh, so I gotta find one that doesn't make my skin crawl. Yeah, I could just do this and, you know, play out cards and, you know, I'm not friends with douchebags. So if anything is hinky, then it's because like, oh, whoops, I, I didn't know that it can do that. Or I misread the card or I forgot that that's not how it was interpreted or something like that. That's pretty straightforward. But I also like the automated system, so you don't have to worry about that. You're like, oh wait, I can't do this. Oh, because, all right, never mind. YGO Pro, but with funding. Yeah, like, they, they took um, everything that Hearthstone did, and then Magic took, and, like, it's a very, very polished format. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Hello, Naoi. But felt like material. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out TCG and see if they've got stuff, or see if they have uh, ways you can custom make some stuff that'd be fun to do. Because uh, I don't I don't know, I don't really, I, I wanna go to the card shop and stuff and play around. The people there seem pretty chill. Um, the ones that, that I talked to, uh, I was eavesdropping. It's hard to do, or hard not to do, uh, when people are just standing there, but um, they were talking about, uh, one guy was, playing up against a new person that came in and just started like destroying lands whatever that means and they were not having any of that shit they're just like I scooped <laughs> I scooped and dipped out and they're like what you're just gonna leave yeah I'm not dealing with this it's like all right <laughs> so <clears throat> land destruction is for asshole <laughs> yeah but it's just stuff like that where like if you could just have some formats and be like, I don't want to do this, or j just the fact that they kind of had standards for what's a fun game to play, and they didn't like that games ended in two turns. Like, th they sound like decent people enough to, to be around, um, but I don't play Magic. And it seems like 
more of a financial investment than I'm willing to get into right now. Um, like these, I have friends that I know enjoy this. I've got the nostalgia factor. I've, I like the cards and how they look and I don't have to learn the game. Like the fact that these are annoying, but I don't have to play them. And there, there are cards that I can put in a deck that say pendulums no longer exist in this game. You know what I mean? Uh, but I've got a few few decks that I've been uh, messing around with in Duel Links that I want to bring into a more uh, better format, like a the main game format. Because uh, I think Kaori only goes up to like fusion summoning. This is the most complicated thing. Uh, and I like Synchros. Uh, I really like the Blue Eyes decks. Um, but since people play it so often in Duel Links, I play Buster Blade. <laughs> it's kind of funny watching people like, all right, if if I can't attack with this dragon, I'm gonna I'm gonna fusion summon Ultimate Dragon. Now what? It's like Swordsman of Destruction is still or the the Dragon Destroyer is still on the field, so you're still in defense position. You just gave me three thousand more attack. But even that that card's not it's it's broken against like a dragon deck, but it can't attack directly. Um. And it's not immune to card effects, so. But, yeah, I, I was showing Corey a few of them, and he's like, I didn't know that card existed, so I, I'm glad I can kind of uh, show him some, some cool stuff there, too. Uh, but yeah, definitely some of my fun money. Oh, let me show you guys. No little D jokes. Um, but I was I was at the card shop. I just need I I was having dreams of like going in and finding gems, and I found a, a few really good cards that I wanted. Like not super good good, but um, I at least found a uh, found a Karma Cut, which I've heard good things about. So I wanted to try implementing that into a deck. I got some Light Swords. And I just like the design of the Light Swords. So I got a, a few of those that I'm going to play around with at some point. Oh, what are you doing away from your... For your brother. Um, uh, but I got two, right? Yeah, two cards of uh, Consonance. Which is super good for Blue Eyes decks. And it even has the uh, Ancient... Or White Stone of the Ancients. I think this, this is White Stone of the Ancients and uh, something else. I don't know. I've got Twister, Space Siphon, which I've heard is getting some play now. Um, but yeah, I got these two. It's like the guy, as I'm perusing, as I'm perusing the cards, some guy comes in, sells a bunch of cards, and then these are uh, the original Legend of Blue Eyes. I don't think they're first edition, but they're Legend of Blue Eyes. Um, ultra Rares. And the guy behind the counter is like, hey, you want these? And I was like, yes, I do. So I bought these. I think I've been uh, one of the only people in there that plays Yu-Gi-Oh. So I know that they, they wanted to like branch out and do more stuff, but they're not supported. Oh, this bag is falling apart. I need to uh, put these away or in the deck. Um. Yeah, I, I, I've been looking at like different deck formats because I like, uh, I really like blue eyes and stuff, but I don't want to be a basic bitch all the time. So it's like, I can be creative with some different stuff. Oh yeah, they there there were a few. Um, I didn't know that Arm Dragon got some support, or it might be some older cards. But I got a few. Uh, I got one after I just fucking ripped this thing. Um, it's okay. Um, let's see here. But yeah, I, I'm on uh, TCG Player, and I've I've got the rest of the set because I wanted the the rest of the Legend of Blue Eyes set. I don't know, just for 
you know, old times there. I know I can get it for 20 bucks on Amazon, the whole thing. Um, but I wanted to do an Exodia deck for funsies to see if I could uh, work something out there. Um, let's see, Red Dragon Phase, Arm Dragon Blitz. Got a couple of those in there. Armor Dragon Ritual. Um, then I have Knight of Armor Dragon. A horse. Horse is one of my favorite cards, just aesthetically. It's kind of like a uh, silver raw. Got another uh, red eyes card in there. I see red eyes uh, arch fiend in there because it counts apparently as a red eyes monster, so it's good for the red eyes deck. Nebula dragon. Got some guard dragons because I got another guard dragon card that was really expensive. It's like twelve bucks. It's expensive to me for a card. Um, this worm just looks cool. The true king. Litho, lith, litho, litho, whatever. Arm dragon level five, fairy dragon, anything like fairy. It's like, oh, it's a tuner and a fairy, or tuner and a dragon. I'm, I'm in. Um, I need that shit. And then the, the light swords, because I got the uh, synchro monster <laughs> back there somewhere. So I've been waiting for the new month that we've been trying to budget and like be, be chill with our fun money. So, I spend it on like some gotchas, like if it's Opera Omnia comes out with a character skin that I like, I'll throw some money there, or uh, Duel Links. I don't like spending money on any other gotchas, really. Um, I'll do $5 here and there for uh, like the monthly packs, for like Epic 7 or something, but... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we get some really cool stuff in the uh, Megaton uh, next month. So I've got that case coming. Um, I'm working with Archie to get some nest trading cards, like some. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in some money for like some really good looking ones, and then um, put together a few tins uh, and send them out uh, for for you guys. You know, I'll take I'll take my pick. What I like, but also hopefully be able to share some like ultra rares or secret rares with you guys, um, and kind of like raffle them out for like gift subs or something like that. Kind of have a subathon, and then like a, a gift sub will be your submission. So you support the channel. You're kind of gambling too. We all get to gotcha, and then I'll throw some uh, nest trading cards in there as well. Uh, those will be limited print. So, yeah, got a, got a lot of cool, cool things in there. I'm trying to like piece together uh, a deck so that I can like set stuff up with like Cory or Yomu and just like duel, have fun. Um, that's it. That's it. I kind of dragged this uh, opening quite a bit. Um, it's just things that I, I like to uh, wanted to get back into hobby that I. I don't know, I don't get out much because of COVID and everything and uh, none of my friends are here anymore. So just having a place or something to kind of uh, indulge in is nice. Uh, it's also, the, I think, the, actually the hardest part of going out is the fact that I have three kids and no babysitter. And I don't trust a babysitter. Like, I, I'd need to bring in like two people <laughs> to just to go out you know what i mean <clears throat> hans moogle rare <laughs> yeah i might i might do some stuff in the discord um i was trying to get um paul from team aps's attention because he also plays final fantasy 14 and he was doing a live stream on YouTube. He was like, I don't I don't know if I'll stream anything else. I play Final Fantasy XIV, but I think it's hard to get into with like the UI and all that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I think you'll have an I'm trapped in his chat like furiously. I think you'll have a much easier time than you think. So that'd be cool. We get some cross. Um Yeah, I I, I might do something at some point. Um and I, and I wanted to like try different rule sets because I do I do just enjoy like the challenge of game design. So like throwing out an idea, not because I think it's a, a an end all fixing like everything idea, but the fact that 
like I can throw it out there and then we can get feedback and then like the whole process of shaping something new that any every more more people at least can enjoy um I think would be fun and and just like already just watching what people are talking about with the current format and the issues that they have but then like the there's a dichotomy kind of uh very similar to what I saw in like Monster Hunter World where you have people who like playing casually and people like playing hardcore and then you have the fringe of those groups saying you can only play casually and you only play hardcore or if you're playing this way if you're not playing casually then you're you know ruining the the spirit of the game or if you're not playing hardcore you're not even playing the game properly it's it's just very weird that people have these you have to play it this way which i don't think is the thing so that's why i i was talking about tears is that if you want to play at this level you can guarantee that you're going to find people at this level at least without like ruining decks altogether you know what i mean like i i think i still think combos are fun but I don't think breaking the board and like omni negates are fun. You know what I mean? And just kind of like trying to see like what is this group not like typically? Because um, it's also like hard to oh, yeah. s look at people and say what's f what's a fun deck for you? So there's some people that just don't want combos going on forever, or just want a very simple. I, I only want a fusion summon. That's it. I wanna wanna play a couple cards, bring a couple monsters out, fusion, and then attack. And then there are people that, well, I want to set up a few synchro monsters and, you know, get their effects going. So then, you know, put them up a tier. Well, I want to use, you know, hand traps and more omni negates and all that stuff. And Uh, Commander in MTG is trying to stress pre-game and post-game conversations for this reason. Right on. Uh, if anything, if anything ever, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever have the time, Azumo, but if anything like that ever were to occur, you guys will definitely know about it. So, um, when the time comes. Yeah, and I'm, I definitely will not oppose people who like board breaking, who like just to dominate. I think, I think if you enjoy that, that's fine. Like, just like, I don't think Dragon Ball Fighters is a shit game. I, I think it's a fine game. I just don't enjoy it personally, so I'm not going to play it very much. I'm not going to bash it to validate myself. I've kind of matured beyond that, and that's a tough place to get to, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, like, every, everybody should have a, a safe area so that it's not just meta dominated or you don't know what you're going to go up against so I, I think having different a couple different tiers for metas would at least help and then people could feel safe using decks and feel more open to enjoying the game in their own way um just having like different brackets you know what i mean um just kind of like having a weight class for wrestling so that's, that's why I said, like, find what generally people don't like in this tier. And then just cut them out. And then this is a strict rule set that you can follow for this. Or if you don't like that one, here's a less restricting rule set. And if you don't like that one, here's an even less restricting rule set. And if you don't like that, here's one that is not restricted. Basically, like, um, like just play the game the way Konami thinks it should be played at the moment. Um, nothing good. We almost got a good card, but it was not the secret rare. It was just the ultra rare. Um, I think this is the closest one to something good that we got. But unfortunately, or not, sorry, not secret, uh, Star, Starlight Rare. Got some cool ones. Got a ZW Dragon. I think this was from Zexel. Um, they just started introducing those characters in, uh, Duel Links. So I see a lot of the ZW dragons. I don't know their effects. Got a couple more of these guys. Which I was surprised to get two of them. Uh, but yeah, no, no big hitters. No big hitters this time. We're just chatting about uh, the game. What would make it fun for people and, and all that stuff. Because it's hard. Like, game design and balance is hard. Um, mostly be almost strictly because of emergent gameplay. 
that's what makes most of it so difficult to do because you had you can balance things like to like the decimal point of yeah this is like if anything's better than anything else it's marginally right you can like crunch the numbers and do that stuff and then you have people playing it in a way that exploits it or you know turns it on its head and So, how much mana do you have to tap for that? <laughs> um, I'm definitely, uh, I do have a sadistic side, so I do understand why people like, like control decks and stuff. Like I can empathize with it, but I don't really like the, the turn count that it, that comes with it. Um, cause when I was playing magic one time, I was playing it with, uh, Corey, Mike, and Steve, and we were doing 2v2, and I think it was Corey and Steve, or was it Seabass and Steve? Yeah, I think it was Seabass and Steve, and then it was Mike and me, and I just, I got a deck that there was just a bunch of cards that tapped the opponent's deck, or the opponent's field, and I would do that nonstop. I'd like, they just couldn't play the game, and I was just laughing my ass off, and Mike's like, let's just... Let's just fucking finish it. Let's. <laughs> this is mean. I'm like, okay, fine. It was mean. I was, I was being a dick, but <laughs> I, I definitely have that side to me where it's just like. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing. Thank you. Welcome back, Temperance. Uh, that would be kind of the goal of of making. Uh, I don't know if you call it a tier system or a weight class system or or whatever. Where, like, again, you just guarantee that these people are, you know, people are going to find a way to, like, sneak around it. Uh, but for the most part, like, yeah, I want I want to play against people who have tier three decks. Um, not, like, actual rating, like, how people are, like, how often is it played in professional scene? But, like, I want, I want this level of gameplay right now. And people are like, oh, yeah, I got a deck for that. And then you play it out and you... Uh, you know, all right. I want, I want, I want less limitations. Okay. All right. I want to, I want 15, 15 minute turns, but only two per game, you know? Okay. We got a deck for that. If you played three chain, en chain energy, you were the rudest asshole in the schoolyard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is like unfortunate because there are a lot of cool cards that I like, but um, there, there's a difference between being like protecting yourself and making it hard to break and just not letting your opponent play. Um, <clears throat> even in fighting games, like there are some things that I'm just like, oh, that felt dirty to do, but at the same time, I, I want to win. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's it for this month on Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, I might show off uh, other stuff that I have or I'll talk to Corey now that school's starting back up for him and he has a little bit more structure in his life. Um, maybe talk to Yomu about stuff and see if I can actually form a deck. Um, but I, I found like a few like Exodia cards at the card shop. Um, and I was just like, there's gotta be a way to like have fun. Like either I summon Exodia or like different parts of them uh, and just kind of figure out some combos just just to have some fun with it well maybe maybe the game was only rituals for them <laughs> wait I got I get um, the tins shouldn't, shouldn't, unless, did they, did they change the release time? The mega, mega tins were October 1st last time I checked. Did they get moved up? I know it wasn't like set in stone, but that's the last information I had.
I'll let you know, Neko. We'll, we'll probably do some more stuff. I've got... Oh, let me let me pull out what I've got so far. So these are for a raw deck that I might do at some point. I need something that helps me recover freaking life points if I'm gonna play raw though. So I got um two decks here that I'm working on. So one is Red Eyes and uh, Buster Blader. I, I ended up finding a Dark Paladin. I don't know how, but I got him. So super happy with that. I actually like this artwork way more. His uh he he looks like he has a waist. Um, black Metal Dragon, Red Eyes Black Chick, Red Eyes Wyvern, uh, Black Flare Dragon, Darkness Dragon. I think this guy's banned Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, but he cool. Uh, Red Eyes Darkness, and then my three Red Eyes. So I'm working on right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. To three, so I'm I'm twenty or seventeen cards short on that one, <clears throat> and then um, going by the OTS release, which is nine twenty. If I get it earlier, that's cool. Um, but that's what I'm pl I'm planning on. Um, I was planning on October. Um, that's when I that's when I slotted Archie to have stuff. Actually, I have. I'm like, if you can have things done by the middle of this month so that we can get ready for next month, um, yeah, I, I, earlier is better. So I got a polymerization here, I got a couple enemy controllers. I don't, I think, I think it's limited to two. It could be just limited to one. I could be wrong. Uh, some draconic tactics, wing beat of giant dragon, another draconic tactics, beacon of white, not a super powerful card, but I like it. Um, because a lot of the blue eyes decks now, uh, involve sending the blue eyes to the graveyard. And there are plenty of ways to get them back. So um, this one's fun. Just keep bringing out a blue eyes with uh, three attacks, I think. Any blue eyes monsters in your graveyard, the equipped monster can attack up to that number of times. During so like, uh, actually that, that can change because there are, a cert there are lots of blue eyes cards now. <laughs> uh, burst room of destruction, obviously some stamping destruction. Mausoleum of White is good just for getting tuners out. Super Rejuvenation. I'm not sure if I'd actually use this in the deck, but it's there. Um, Rider of the Stormwinds. I'm not sure if this will fit properly in the deck, but I have him there. Ah, get back. I just have him as an extra tuner. Um, Master with Blue Eyes. He's, he's pretty good for the combo. Silver's Cry. I love this card. Got a couple Kaiba Mans, got a Dragon Spirit of White, obviously, and got my three blue eyes and an Azure uh, Silver Dragon. So I need to put the, so let's do this right now. This is the blue eyes, because why I got the cards of consonants. Enemy controller is unlimited. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, like I don't, I don't think people are wrong for liking the current competitive meta. I mean, that's fine. Like they're always faced with a new challenge of, can I build a deck around this? And that's totally cool. Um, these two in there, keeper of the shrine. I want it in there as well. I don't know if I'll keep them. I'm not really optimizing at the moment. Um, I don't think Nebula Dragon will work in there. And these are just Light Sworn stuff, so. I might stick Karma Cut in this one as well. I don't know. We'll, we'll have fun with it. And then I got my. I need to get the. Um... Which one is this? Is this side loaded? Bottom loaded? Bottom loaded. Uh, 
I need to get more of these form-fitting card uh, sleeves. I think they're called Japanese uh, sleeves. I'm just gonna flip it around so you can't even see the price anymore. All right, like that. And then Stickerino and they're double sleeves. I think it is, apparently it wasn't legal before. I guess because if you double sleeve some cards, you could tell the thickness of it and that would be bad juju for like stacking, but I think it's allowed now as long as you only have one. So I'm just gonna do this for now. I will dual uh, sleeve later. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that like all the combos and stuff I'm learning in Duel Links and stuff are still fun decks to play against. I might tune them down if if I stomp. Like, I don't know how hardcore it goes. Like I said, I think he was talking about just doing... Um, I'll throw Twister in there as well. Or Mystical Space, space Typhoon. Um, I think he only does summons. So, like different forms of summoning doesn't make your deck super strong necessarily, but the combos that you pull off with them definitely do. Can have a substantial effect on the state of the game. You know what I mean? Um, regardless of where they play, I think so. I think it's global. I, I they keep, Duel Links keeps like, they, they make it a point to tell you if you um, are playing somebody from a different country, like a, another country for the first time. So. Felgrand is fun. I have a Felgrand. I have a couple of him. I don't have, I don't think I have any of the Paladins though. So that's the that's the tricky part that I'm stuck at at the moment. Let me put these, smush them together. Kith, no Kith, and I won't worry about. here which just fun to have really fun to have so I'd probably mess around with the actual yeah, these are weird decks <laughs> they got some cool cards but I wanted to uh, I know Corey had his, so I wanted to play around with him at some point uh, for it. And pick different ones. Yeah, hopefully I can get my hands on a Dragon Maid deck at some point. I would really like that. Um, anyway, I think we'll call it for today. Uh, for today, I am going to um, upload the fifth Terraria video to YouTube. Uh, not uh, well, obviously it's going to be on YouTube, but uh, it'll be available on Patreon for a bit. It won't be on YouTube for another week or so. Um, I'm just trying to space it out to give myself like buffer time. Um, Taking that month to really work on the best of helped me space out my content a lot. So I've got like a lot more room to breathe 
on like releasing stuff and YouTube's been happy because I'm releasing stuff weekly, even though it's like every few days. Had to do the one, uh, the re most recent T one a little bit more quickly because of uh, the sponsor in there. I would have waited a little longer on the Terraria. I've been trying to go like Terraria, Final Fantasy, Terraria, Final Fantasy, Terraria, Final Fantasy, because I've got, um, I sent three to Scribble. So I sent like the T fourth, the fourth T video to Scribble. Um, and then Terraria four and five. And then she knocked out all those already. And then I just sent her the fifth T video right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna switch to like a weekly um, release. So then I, I've got enough of a buffer for when Endwalker hits, and then I can like work on all those videos. And then while I'm working on them, like still releasing stuff, you know, and then keep it consistent again. You have the Dragon Maid deck? Nice. Yeah, we, we, I messed around with it a little bit. How much Terraria is left? Um, that's a good question. Uh, let me look at the footage real fast. So I just did the fifth Terraria video. Let me look in here for the shadow play. See, I can I can put my hand on this because it's not like I'm not actually moving and rubbing against the mat. I really don't like the mat texture. Uh, shadow play. I think I have. Do I still have it in Terraria? Yeah, I do. Um. Okay, I didn't move these around, so let's try a four, then we have five. Um, I've got a day six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So there might be a total of, I'm, I mash them together here and there, if like depending on like what the ultimate footage looks like. So we could end up at seven or eight videos more than likely. Um, but yeah, I've got from Terraria footage from basically 10 different days. And that's how I, I split them up. Did I, did I put out a director's cut all the way up to the Moon Lord? Huh. I don't remember doing that. When, when did I become a Yu-Gi-Oh Twitcher? Or Yugi Twitch? Um, since I realized that if I unbox or if I open packs on stream, they're a business expense. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was probably was whoopses. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I like to do for this. Um, same thing when I was like modding these Game Boys. Uh, the adjustable brightness screen and the what do you call the IPS screens. The, the pearl finish like these feel really good these are really cool new buttons so yeah I, I, I did that one um, did I do one or two on stream I think I did I think I did only the SP which was a pain I'm not doing another SP again until I get my hands on the aluminum body which I really want to do at some point. So I'll, I'll do that at some point if I get my hands on it. Um, it's just the, it's expensive. Not not me expensive. Like for, for something like that, I'd, I'd throw about as much money toward getting all the parts for it as I would 
getting a Switch, basically. This is a really cool piece of hardware. Good nostalgia. Um, yeah. Um, did I get the Golden Sun 1 and 2? I got 1. I got Golden Sun 1. I didn't know there was a... A second one until I got to the end of the first game and I was like this seems like a like there's more to the story um, so yeah I need to need to get to it eventually but I did finish um, one and I'll probably be playing them on the SP now because I, I installed a an accelerator on this and I didn't know how much of a pain the it, it was to put it on an SP board. But this one has a uh, Harvest Moon. My brother gave me all his old stuff because I made him a Game Boy and then I um, he got a uh, an SD card. So you can just download all of them, which I, I don't do just because Nintendo says no, and I don't want to get in trouble. But um, otherwise, I, I really I don't think that downloading those games is morally objectionable because you're not taking money out of anybody's pocket at this point. It's just the fact that they have the rules, and I don't want to be like, well, I follow some rules if I think they make sense, but I don't if others. Um, I'm not talking about parsers here. <clears throat> anyway. Do you gold transfer it unlocks a lot of stuff into? Yeah, I'll try I'll probably try that. Yeah, we're, we're already done battering. We, we opened it up. Um, we'll be doing a lot more um, either at the end of this month or early next month, as soon as the Megatons come in, because we've got a lot of those coming in. I'll probably send one to Corey as a gift. I'll be sending some out to you guys. Um, I'll be donating some to the local card shop. I'll see if there are any charities that we can share some with some kids. You know? But this is... Uh, more or less what we got from uh, Dawn of Majesty boosters. We've got five of each, nine cards in each pack. So nothing, nothing super crazy here. And then got a Some of these. It's just all the commons and stuff, you know. Uh, if we want to show the ultra rares that we got, the foils. So that's what we're working with at the moment. Take it easy, Neko. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what uh, what happens. There's plenty of stuff going on tomorrow. Tea as usual. Um, we haven't gotten a whole lot of footage, which is kind of good for me at the moment because I'm catching up on all the other stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it going at, like, a regular pace. The YouTube really, really, really did not like me taking time off to finish the best ofs. But as soon as the best of came out, oh, Drag, I got this and recommended. Oh, Drag, I see, I've never seen this channel before. Oh, Drag, this is great. It's like, yeah. It's fucking YouTube sucks. But, um, 
yeah, I'm gonna keep the algorithm happy for a bit now that I have uh, just just make the absolute best of the partnership uh, scribble and I have, and, you know, leverage that as much as we can to keep things more consistent, at least for like YouTube standards. Um, I'm, I'm upset that I had to release this stuff so soon. I should have like thought about that a little bit more thoroughly. Um, I, I probably could have waited a few more days for the latest T1, at least just to like kind of give this week something. But um, I don't like back-to-back -back releases of videos. But anyway, I think we are done for today. So thank you guys for hanging out. Hope you had fun. Um, we'll be doing more of this, like I said, next month. And then we'll be doing two tomorrow. So uh, check out Patreon if you want to support the channel. Or drop a Twitch Prime here if you'd like. Or, yeah, I think that's about it. So, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. God bless you all. We will see you next time on the stream.